Greetings! My name is the Small C Cynic, and today we're continuing our playthrough of Shadowrun Returns. Now, I did time this properly because one of the things I'm trying to do, and you might notice this from now on, is that I'm trying to make things more chirotic on my channel. And if you're a fancy literature major or someone who just reads a lot of rhetoric, you know that Kairos is basically the timeliness of uh, choosing your arguments or choosing your uh, moments to kind of like present your case. And that's what I'm trying to do here by uh, not so subtly putting these uh, Shadowrun Returns videos out when guess what's on the Epic Store for free? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm being a little bit shallow here, but uh, you know, I mentioned that because I don't know if that was just a happy coincidence or if it was Epic actually doing something kind of on the nose at a tug in cheek. But uh, with the whole Fortnite scandal going on on the, the Apple Store, it just seems so poetic that they would put something like this out. But, uh, you know, it could just be complete happenstance. Alright, so where were we? Oh, right, we were about to enter the uh, Seamstress's Union. Since that's where our lead is... Um... I don't think there's anything else for us to do here. Oh, right, we got some karma points we need to spend. And don't worry about uh, preserving any karma because you'll get plenty of it in the future. Now, does he have anything new to sell us? Uh, nah, we're good. We don't need any of these crap. Okay, so we got 13,000 new yen. Not a bad start. And I think we get healed up during his, when we go into the thing, but uh, I could be wrong. We'll see. Relative to the rest of the barons, Dorisville is in a neon-clothed oasis. At its heart is the Seamstress's Union. Housed in an old brownstone building on the corner of Illegal and Opportunity, bums huddle together, gangsters strut the streets, and the occasional salaryman comes slumming. The Union building has been retrofitted, rebuilt, and restored so many times that it's, un bleh, that it's like an aging starlet wearing too much makeup in an attempt to stay young. The wild ivy growing out of the gutters adds to this effect. As you enter, the murmur of hushed conversation washes over you. The dive bar desident, desident, oh, I hate that word. The dive bar desident, desident, patrons raise their heads, take your measure, and then go back to their business. This is the kind of place where everyone knows your name, but keeps to themselves. Oh, so it's just like, you know, Fridays, except with magic. See, we just got two karma already. <laughs> they just give it to you like pieces of candy. Now, while the gameplay uh, is nowhere near as like complex as, uh, let's say, Pills of Eternity or, hell, let's even say uh, Shadowrun Dragonfall, I do like that the flavor text is so well done. And uh, I mean, there's a reason why I bought the Deluxe Edition because I instantly fell in love with the. Uh, the style and the uh, the flavor text of this world. <laughs> but maybe that's just me. The bartender is a striking elf sporting a perfectly toned body, perfectly pouty lips, and perfectly tapered ears. Her eyes harmonize save me and take me in equal measure, hitting just the right notes for maximum extraction of tips. Hey there, I haven't seen you here before. What can I get you? Hmm. Eh, let's be cordial. I found a bar tab with Coyote's name on it. She here? She looks worried. No, I think she's away on business. Business, huh? Is she a shaman with a name like Coyote? <laughs> no. She shot a coyote once, thinking it was a shaman who double-crossed her. We've been calling her Coyote ever since. She's been missing since yesterday. Some people think the Ripper got her, but I know her. Coyote can take care of herself. 
She starts to turn away when a man with the face of a survivor and the zeal of a convert tugs at her arm. Hard. It's clear the two have a history. They try to keep their voices low, but the intensity of their conversation makes it easy to overhear. Cherry, you have to listen to me. If you stick around here, you could end up dead or worse. The Ripper is out there, and he's real. The last killing happened just down the block. And now Coyote's missing. They'll probably find her tomorrow in a dumpster without her head. Come on, Cherry Bomb, think. I think plenty, Shane. I'm getting a PH fucking D. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Language. <laughs> I'm getting a PH freaking D from UW in f neuroprosthetics, studying under OJMNs? Whatever. And how am I paying for it? Bartending. Tips. There are faster ways for a Baron's girl to earn that kind of scratch, but I'm not taking them. So what do you want from me? I want what you want. A better life. A better world for everyone. The Universal Brotherhood can give you that. I've heard this all before. This isn't some trick to get us back together. Things are different now. I'm different. The Brotherhood. Cherry Bomb's face is pretty hard. Armored in lipstick and low expectations. The Universal Brotherhood is for other people, Shane. Rich Baluva types who can afford their membership fees and voluntary donations. This isn't about money. It's about binding the world together in Brotherhood. Come with me. Attend a discovery meeting. Get to the core of who you are. I heard Lynn Telestrian give it a talk last night called The New Family of the Six World. And the Six World was referring to all the arcane mythical stuff. I've got a family here, Shane. They're drunks and lowlifes and whores, and I choose them over any of your brotherhood members. Now buzz off. I need to get back to work. With body language that leaves no question that the conversation is over, Terry Bomb turns her back on him. Well, oh, you got shut down. Boyfriend from religion? Her pretty eyes narrow. Something like that. You got a look that says you're not here for entertainment. Are you a badge? Do I look like a cop? Nah, just go with nope. I didn't think so. You look like a runner to me. We're trained to spot a bronze the minute they walk in here. Something I can help you with? I have a few questions. Tell me about this place. Some come here for booze, some for companionship. Others are looking for something they can get anywhere else. They can't get anywhere else. If it's illegal or immoral, and it can be bought, sold, rented, or consumed, you can probably find it here. The union seems to attract people like you. Who was that you were talking to? Shane, old boyfriend. He used to work here. Then one day he saw a billboard for the Universal Brotherhood, and that was that. Went to a meeting, made new friends, moved in with them. I was happy for him, until he started coming around trying to recruit me. I don't need that trek. Have you ever heard the name Sam Watts? Sam was a regular customer, and a regular pain in the ass for a long time as I've been here. Talked a big game, but he was always broke. As soon as he got any money in his pocket, it went straight to his head. Chips, drugs, or booze. Coyote had a soft spot for him, though. Did you see Sam on the night he died? No, that was Coyote's shift. Who runs this place? I want to talk to them. That would be Miss Kubota. She's in the back room. You can't miss her. Wiz. Nil sweat. Talk to you later. See? You can be friendly. Okay, what do you got? Who are you? Hey guy, I got some extra outfits I've been meaning to unload. Want first dibs? Sure. Now right now, I have the secure rigor clothing. Um... Let's see, let me check my stats for a second. Let's see, I think I want intelligence, is that the one I'm, is that the one I'm equipped in? Sorry, not intelligence, oh yeah, intelligence for decking, okay. So that would also be for my thing. Now I'm curious if I want to try in the future a kind of a mixed build, that way I can kind of like, you know, try something a little different. I kind of go for pure builds typically in this game, so uh, Something I might consider. Let's see, so I got the black hat. Or the tourist look. Tempting. <laughs> what looks more fitting for me? Um. Yeah, let's go for the black hat. Eh. 
There we go. Now we're store now we're sporting some stylish threads. Okay, so one improvement already. Let's see. That's how we progress. Let's talk to Jin over here. The Asian woman expression reads open for business, but her demeanor demeanor means dealer rather than companion. She has a jack on her neck, a gun on her hip, and a chip on her shoulder. She eyes you with a sneer. You look like you could use some firepower. Something simple. I got guns so smart they practically fire themselves. You looking for tech? Got some of that too, if the way that if that's the way you roll. Hell yeah, give me some of that. Okay, so let's see. Weapons. Um I don't see any improvements, so I'm gonna keep what I got. But drones. Well, I could get that, but uh, for right now, I think I'll keep the one I have because I'm going to need that 800 for my party members. But, let's see. I have three med kits. Okay, then I should be fine. So long as I have some med kits, I should be good. Now, do I still have low health? Nope, I figured I got a free heal, so just keep that in mind whenever you have to go back here. Oh, I walked past the bouncer. <laughs> Posted at the doorway to the VIP section is a tower of troll muscle wrapped in an impossibly tailored suit. Whether the product of good jeans or expensive after the work, aftermarket cosmetic work, the troll's gleaming horns perfectly frame his face. The and his polished tux... Ugh. And his polished tusks and goatee accentuate the set of a lantern jaw. Welcome. Please behave yourself. You must be the union's hired muscle. Must I? Only if you insist. You have business here? I'm a friend was a friend of Sam Watts. You know him? Sure, everyone here knew Sam. Shame to lose a part of the family. There's a sharpness in Clu how do you say this name? Cluiz? I'll go with that. With in Cluie's eyes, the look of a man who has seen much and earned wisdom at a young age. Let's see. In your role here, I suppose you often escorted Sam to the door. Yes, albeit gently. Sam was a drunk, but he usually wasn't a violent one. Usually? What about the night he died? He was a bit agitated, didn't catch the specifics. Might have been over a woman. Thought I was going to have to throw him out, but I had to deal with a couple of rival go-gangers posturing for one of them working girls upstairs. Jake helped Sam out instead. Well, that was useful. I appreciate you talking with me. Happy to help. Okay. So, there is Miss Kabuto. I think there's two more people we need to talk to first. First, Johnny Clean. The man is dressed like a janitor, but is wearing unusually clean overhauls. He's tall, rail thin, and has a cunning look in his eye that says he knows that he's more than just a maintenance man. Howdy. Name's Johnny Clean. You new? I am. I imagine you've seen all sorts of things in a place like this, eh? True. Quite true. And I keep my mouth shut about it, too. That's the secret of keeping a job here. And staying alive in general. Gotta work. See you around. Well, aren't you naturally evasive? Nog. Noog. Yeah, Noog, that's how you say it. Covered in glowing t magical talisman and... Yeah, go ahead. Fetishes. The troll does not seem to fully seem fully of this world. He mumbles to himself constantly, apparently participating in several conversations at once. But with entities you can neither see nor hear. I told you, it's not like that at all. Bring me proof and you shall have it. I am honored, your majesty. That was why I used muster instead of catsup. Forgive me, John. I was a fool. He looks to you in the eye. The other conversation's on hold. You may peruse my magical wares and see their glory. Well. So, I guess if I wanted to use, like, maybe a low-level spell or something, this could be a nice follow-up. If I were, it would probably be something like weakened armor. But since I'm going into rigging... I'm probably going to get some cyber tech, so I won't exactly be magically tuned. But, uh, 
We'll get to that soon. Eventually. Alright, so that just leaves the owner of this, this fine establishment. Miss Kabota. Kabuto? Yeah, so Kabo Kabota. There you go. Miss Kabota watches you across the room, sizing you up as you approach. As you get closer, you can see that she is a mixed race, African and Japanese. Her demeanor says, this is my house. Mess with it at your apparel. But her eyes twinkle with a playful light while she speaks. Uh... Kabanwa? <laughs> Good. I'm already butchering so many things in this playthrough. <laughs> Good evening. Are you enjoying this seamstress union? There should be plenty for a man like you to enjoy. She eyes you close. Or is this business? I just need a moment of your time. I have topics to discuss. Soka. So, why should I help you? Sam Watts, I'm looking for his killer. Her face brightens, amused. Ah, so you are the little insurance policy he would go on about when he was drunk. His avenging angel who would strike back for him from beyond the grave. What do you want to know? How well do you know him? I knew him. We all did. Sam was a regular here. Whenever he could beg or borrow enough new yen to become altered in some way. Drugs, chips, alcohol. It didn't matter. As long as he was bent. He was always looking for his next fix. He clung to this place like it was his lifeline. And we treated him as part of the family. Even if none of us truly liked him. Except Coyote. Did you see him on the night of his death? He was here, quite inebriated, as often. Coyote was working the bar that night, and she informed me that Sam was getting rowdy and belligerent with other customers. When I requested he leave, he refused. My bouncer, Mr. Cluey, was about was off dealing with another issue, so I requested that Jake escort Sam out of the back door to the alley. That was the last I saw of either of them. So why is this place called the Seamstress's Union? During the Gold Rush years, there was a census and the politicians wanted as high a number as possible to gain power and revenue. To bolster the numbers, they decided to include all the working girls, of which there were many, to the roles. However, given the times, they could not list the girls' true occupation, so they entered them all as seamstresses. When a girl accumulated enough money to open her own place, she named it the Seamstresses Union so potential workers would know that they would be treated here fairly. And thus, a rich tradition was born. So, are you a former... No, perhaps when we know more of each other, I will reveal more about myself. For now, enjoy the union. One more question. Can you tell me where to find Coyote? Would that I know. I have not seen her in two days. She's a smart woman, and quite dangerous, but I fear for her. If she's smart, then why feel for her? Fear. Blech. Because she's in dangerous line of work, and there is always someone smarter, more prepared. Her room is upstairs. If you are looking for her, I invite you to examine it. You may be to uncover. You may be able to uncover her whereabouts. I would normally not betray her privacy in this way, but she's missed two shifts now, and cannot be reached on her comm. It's not like her. If something has happened, I will not have inaction on my conscience. Here's the key. Apologies for having a really hard time kind of talking for a long bit because. Uh, in order to actually record this audio without too much interference in the background, I have to turn off the fan and it gets really stuffy up here. So that's why having to pause the recording every time I need to cough or something. Gotta love allergy seasons. So now we're looking for a Coyote who will help us find Sam. So let's just uh, follow this goose chase and see where it leads up. Now, it's nice that they give you some amount of choice in uh, path building for yourself, but uh, it's it's nowhere near the next two games. So just keep that in mind if this seems a little underwhelming. Okay, I'm not seeing anything in this room. What about the next? You can tell this was designed for an iPad. Looks like her belongings are kept the. Looks like clothes. 
words. <laughs> I can sometimes utter them. Looks like Cody keeps her clothes in boxes on the floor. That is so relatable. The stand is littered with action movies and cigarette buds. Okay, that's not relatable. A framed painting of the Chicago skyline, domed in a shroud stylized silhouette. Coyote's bed has a diary with several papers sticking out. There's a receipt stuck between the pages, and a diary entry. A receipt for a Browning Max Power Pistol from Jin Park downstairs, with a note saying how big guns on hot women turn her on. <laughs> I came back from my shift to find four of Paco's goons sleeping on our apartment floor. It's, get, it's getting fragging ridiculous. I want to be with them, with the real Paco, but this cutter dreck keeps messing everything up. I love him, but he's totally different with the gang. It's how I make cash, baby, he always says. I usually I try to tell him he doesn't need the cash. I could support us both with what I make at the union. But he goes on in these runs. With these bozos all over my floor, I feel like he's just seeing how far he can push me before I kick him out. I just try to be patient. But why does he have to but why does this all ugh. But why does this all have to be one on the <laughs> Really hard time speaking this long. But why does it have to be all one way? As soon as the last cutter was out the door, I lost it. I told him if he ever pulled Drek like that again, that he could be sleeping in the alley. Of course he begged and pleaded with me, telling me it wouldn't happen again. I don't want to deal with this anymore. But I don't want him to leave. He's the reason I got... <coughs> He's the reason I got through all that stuff last year, got my license, got this apartment, and this life. I know he cares about me and loves me. More than his involvement with the cutters. I just wish I could slice out... <sighs> I just wish I could slice out that gang from our life together. Slice out the fear that comes along with it. Okay. So let's check another page. The paper has a handwritten poem on it. And a diary entry. Let's just say that Paco should stick to guns and motorcycles and leave poetry to others. <clears throat> Sometimes it may seem like Paco reads my mind, or my diary. Maybe he does the latter. I wouldn't be surprised. Hi, Paco. Ever since last week, he hasn't mentioned the cutters once. He leaves the apartment with a see you soon in a few hours, babe, and returns later without a comment. I don't know if it's really going to help us to avoid the subject and conversation completely, but I have left better without our constant arguing. But I have felt better without our constant arguing about it. The last two nights, I've come home from work to Paco waiting for me, slouching on the old dumpster couch with a novel four inches from his face. I imagine that as I turn the key in the door, he perks up and makes himself look especially studious for when I get the door open. He seems superficially surprised to see me, but I love this little act. Now one thing I do like about this game, and you can kind of see it in this one ex moment, is that even though there's nothing like visually going on, the way the words are written, they kind of evoke these uh, mental images that you could put together and kind of see a lot more of the story that's not being shown to you. So this is one of those cases where show, don't tell actually is the opposite. Tell, but don't show. And that's enough to kind of spur the mind to kind of create these mental images and make the scene a lot more interesting than this boring reading of a, you know, computer screen. But anyways, on to the third paper. There's a receipt and an old photograph stuck between the pages. A COD receipt for a special order. Five pounds of zebra meat from Maury's Meat Emporium, located near Pike Place, Par Place Market. The picture shows a young woman with a caramel skin and dark brown hair. She has a snake wrapped around her arm, yet she is smiling. The back of the photograph has shadows scrawled on it. I don't remember what the significance of that is, but I'm sure it will become important soon. A receipt for a wall safe installed near the bathroom door. Set to a combination of blah 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 blah. Okay. So 342 and 436. Got it. So... Is this it? Ah, but this is what I'm looking for. Oh. Never mind, just got a frag grenade. Okay. 
All right, last plus to check. Com bleh. Coyote's computer is ancient, probably fished it out of a junkyard. He doesn't even have a data jack, and the crack display on is covered with fingerprints. Tapping the keyboard causes the duct case... Bleh. Tapping the keyboard causes the dust cake fan to spit up, only to play display on the screen password. Without the password, the only other option on the screen is password recovery option. What if it's that uh, shadow thing, but we'll just do thing, this. Let's see. Please answer three questions to reset password. Your first childhood pet. Hmm, probably shadow. Your favorite musical act. Um, I don't remember that. Wait, there was a, there was a photograph. What was the photograph of? Oh wait, what is this? No, not it. Okay, not it. Da, 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 da. Not it. What was the thing I'm looking? I'm, I'm thinking of. We may have to guess this because I completely forgot. Okay, so it was the uh, whatever one I I couldn't I didn't read I read it so fast that I didn't even see it. Okay, your password has been reset to da 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 for security. Never write down your password. Logging you in. Okay, so uh, calendar. Three days ago, meet with Dahlia about gig. Today, meet Paco for a date at Pike Place Market. Due in thirty minutes. Contacts. Her list is exactly one entry, someone named Paco. There's no comlink number or other contact information. This does not seem like a very useful list. Yes, indeed. Quick scan of her recent searches show that Coyote has been reading a great deal about Hellhounds. It also suggests more than a casual interest in vi vintage action figures. Well, she sounds like a collector. All right, so now we know what we're looking for. And now we have our next job. All right, so, oh, there she is. How can I help you? Do you know Paco? He's a ganger, a member of the Cutters. He's a good kid in a nasty line of work. I warned her against getting too attached to that type. They don't live long. Have you heard of Mori's Meat Emporium? No, I'm a vegetarian. Did you know that Jin Park sold Coyote a gun recently? I'd be more surprised if she hadn't. Bouncers can deal with most of the troublemakers, but around here you need a gun just to take out the jump, take it trash out to the dumpster. Coyote has a date with Paco at the uh, Pike. Coyote has a date with the Paco. Coyote has a date with Paco at Pike Place Market in the next half hour. If you could go down there, it would might bring me a peace of mind. I'll call a cab for you. It should be... Ugh. It should be able to get you there in time. I'm not even going to try to say that. Good luck. So I guess we don't get any uh, runners on this mission. Um, Do I need anything? Well, first I need to actually spend my points. <laughs> that might be a good idea. Yeah, let's do that. Then I can get uh, two drones next, and that'll be uh, very useful. You catch a cab from Touristville to Pike Place Market in a, mercifully, in a mercifully quiet ride that takes you from probably going to be mugged to probably going to pay too much for your drinks. Compared to the urban wasteland of the Barrens, the downtown area is filled with modern buildings, lighted streets, 
and unbarred shops, all living between the shadows of massive, of massive corporate. Ar- Ugh. Try it again. All living between. All living beneath the shadows of massive corporate arcologies. For many, these arcologies are home. For others, they're hulking monuments to the where the world went wrong. Famous for its fishmongers, Pike Place Market has been around since the early 1900s overlooking the bay. Now it's a market for all things legal and illegal. A melting pot of the haves and have-nots. Even though most of the shops are closed, the sights, sounds, and smells of the market hit you from the time you step out of the cab. Now thankfully, for my sake, there's going to be combat soon, so I won't have to talk so much. Oh, these must be the Brotherhood guys mentioned beforehand. The handsome young man turns away from the crowd and fixes you with his full, completely undivided attention. Sir, you are a beautiful human, but you could be so much more. Uh, what are you selling? I'm not selling anything. We are giving away the secrets to a more fulfilling, happy, and productive life. Okay, I'll bite. What are these secrets? The first step is to simply come and listen. Tomorrow night, Lynn Telestrian will be talking about the importance of family in the sixth world. Please join us, and the secrets to a level better life shall be yours. He smiles and turns back to the crowd. Uh huh. Wonder if these guys will be any, any important to the plot. Probably not. Synth juice? No. Oh, Paco. Just the man I was looking for. Anything else around here? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, let's go get Paco first. Alright, buddy. I need your help. The kid in front of you sports the trademark yellow of the Cutter Gang. Clean, yeah. young, cleave-shaven. He, like he stands like he owns the street and everyone on it. He seems distracted, though, glancing around with increasing agitation. He looks over you as you approach. Watch yourself. What do you want? Careful, kid. You Paco. What the? Who the hell are you? Relax. We're on the same team. I was just at the union. Your girlfriend's gone missing, and I'm I'm helping to I'm helping to find her. The tough guy swagger seems to drain out of him. The cutter is gone, and before you stands a kid in a yellow jacket that doesn't quite fit. She's missing. Oh man, that would explain. She was supposed to meet me here over an hour ago. Look, sorry for getting in your face like that. What else do you know? If she's missing, I need to find her. Do you know a, a fixer named Mr. Delia? Coyote had a meeting with him a few days ago. I know of him, sure. Blake doesn't allow any cutters to take side gigs, though, so I got no reason to deal with him. She hasn't said anything about talking to... She hasn't said it. She hasn't said anything about taking new work. Wait a minute. Drek, I know where she went. Damn. Why couldn't she wait, damn it? Whoa, slow down. Where'd she go? The Royal Apartments. The landlord, Stevie J, runs a drug ring out there, that hellhole. Coyotes grew up there. Doesn't like to talk about it much. She's been looking for a way to sell the score with that guy for years. A few days back, I heard Mr. Lai was looking for some runners to steal some sort of item out from under Stevie J's nose. She must have taken the job. I'm sure of it. And if his thugs caught her, I'm going over there. You coming? One more thing. Coyote had a receipt for some zebra meat. Ever heard of it? What? Look, that shop's just down the block if you want to go check out there, but I'm going to, to the Riyadh with or without your help. What's it going to be? Okay, so... I'll help you get her back, but you'll be able to hand yourself in a fight, okay? It's going to get ugly. Of course, I know my way around a fight. Stevie J better be ready for a world of hurt. Now, let's get moving. The Riyadh is just a few blocks north from here. Okay, I headed north by accident, but that's basically the direction we are going to go. (laughs) 
Okay, I remember what the zebra meat was for. It was for the hellhounds that she was looking up. Right. That makes sense. I mean, in a twisted way, that makes sense. But, uh, yeah, now that I just thought about it, it does make sense when I think about it now. I think this is the shop I'm looking for. Yeah, it says it on the sign there. The small meat stand stand the 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 the. Try that again. The small meat stand presents an enormous diversity of dead animals, from cow, canine to the exotic and paranormal. The pictures on the back of the stand feature a much older version of the man in front of you. As soon as he notices Paco, the prior's eyes become hard and angry. What do you want? You know we can't afford more. Relax, man. My friend just has a question. You must be Mari. Do I look like a fat old man to you? I'm Manny. Maury's my dad. Now what do you want? Do you know someone named Coyote? Nope. I don't get in much for that shaman stuff. I have a receipt for an order of zebra meat. Do you still have it? Yeah, I'll look it up. Yeah, I got it right here. Two days past the pickup time. Didn't think anyone was going to come for it. Here. All yours. Why would someone want to buy zebra meat for? Some people eat it, but I wouldn't recommend that. Tough as nails. We mostly sell it to corp security teams who use it to reward their hellhounds. The flamers go crazy for the stuff for some reason. Oh, Drek. That's why she wanted the zebra meat. Everyone talks about the pet hellhound Stevie J keeps locked up somewhere in the Royale. And she never picked it up. Whatever. Anything else? Well, what's your problem with him? Why don't you ask him? What the hell is that supposed to mean? It means that your gang likes to stroll through here and really... Relieve us merchants of our new yen. My dad stood up to them, and he's still in the hospital. Look, that's not my problem. I'm at the bottom of the cutter ranks anyway. I couldn't do dreck about that even if I wanted to. Tell that to my dad. I don't have time for this. We need to go find Coyote. Yeah, right. Let's just keep going. Also, I just realized the tattoo that he has. I don't know. Seems pretty un gang-like to me, but, you know, who am I to say? I'm wearing a top hat. <laughs> As, you're Ugh. As your eyes adjust to the flashing lights, you spot the body of a young woman, dead on the pavement behind the police line. Panic spreads across Paco's face. Oh shit, is that Coyote? This isn't happening, God damn it! Look, just buddy, just breathe. Take a closer look, is that her? Paco steps forward and takes a huge sigh of relief. No, it's not her. Thank God. Look, let's not hang around here too long, okay? Too many Lone Star pigs around here. Paco looks over at the victim again. It's too bad whatever happened. I'm not going to let anything like that happen to Coyote. Sure thing, buddy. Alright. Okay, so it looks like it's another Ripper case. Hello there, Officer Landers. A tall, emotionless Lone Star officer blocks entry to the crime scene. Behind her, you spot the lively face of an organ grinder's coroner. This is an active Lone Star investigation. Please step away from the barrier. I'm here to see Coroner Dresden. And who might you be? It's alright, officer. He's with me. Dresden steps up to the barrier with a grim, warm grim. Okay then, make it quick. I figured that would smooth talk my way in. Lying on the pavement is the body of a young woman female. Her eyes have been gouged out, and you notice a string of bite marks I hate when it does that. Bite marks along her arm, whatever. Hello there, Dresden. So what brings you out here? Hot on the trail of the dead man's killer? Coincidence, believe it or not. I tape guys come across another Ripper murder? Yeah, that's what it looks like. As you can see, the Ripper went for the eyes this time. Pretty clean work. I got a hand to him. Our Ripper knows what he's doing. Or she, I suppose. What do you know about the victim? Well, not much. She's been dead for maybe three hours. Her name was Lucy Warden. Worked at the Stuffer Shack just around the corner. Looks like she was just, just leaving work when it happened. Can you tell me if she was subdued in any way? Before her eyes were removed? That's a strange thing. There doesn't seem to be any signs of a shrugger. Struggle. Not a single bruise on her body, yet she was clearly alive when the eyes were taken. Died of blood loss shortly thereafter. As to what knocked her out, I don't know. I won't know until I run some tasks. 
I won't know until I run some tests back at the lab. I thought you ran the Redmond franchise. Isn't Pike Place a little far from home? Yeah, well, I don't mind the change of scenery. The corridor for the downtown branch is out on maternity, so I told the management that I would cover for her on this one. Plus, I want the sicko caught. What about those bite marks on her arm? Ah, completely unrelated. It appears some wild dogs dragged the body out here from the alley, some time after her death. Okay, what about magic? There was, a usual, there was an unusual explosion in the alley where Sam died. Now this is an interesting thought. No, nothing obvious though. I'm sure when McCluskey shows up, he'll call in a full mag magical forensics team though. Just to be sure. <laughs> oh boy, magical forensics. What a weird world we're in. So, Ripper takes the liver and this woman's eyes. Any theories? Trophies of some sort, I suppose. Probably some, some symbolic significance. Beyond that, I couldn't speculate. Well, thanks anyway, Dresden. Hey, I figured if it'd help you out, there's a better chance to get this scumbag off the streets a little sooner. McCluskey wants the Ripper in his cell, sure. But he couldn't care less if it takes another dozen murders. Good luck out there, eh? He turns his... He starts to turn back to his body and then stops. Speaking of McCluskey, you should probably get going soon before he shows up. Good idea. Hello there, officer. The plainclothes Lone Star officer before you sports a tacky hat and a crook crooked grin to match. So, you're the one who's working for the dead man, eh? McCluskey warned us you might be sniffing around here after the Ripper. Lucky for you, I got here before McCluskey. I'm Officer McGuire. Aguire. Pleased to meet you. Now seeing as this crime scene is going nowhere fast, what can I do for you? Hmm. I take it you and McCluskey don't see eye to eye. Let's just say we have interesting conflicting interests. What can you tell me about the murder? Not much. We know it was about three hours ago, and we know that her eyes have been surgically removed. Don't need Dresden to figure that much out. He's been looking at the body though, so he might be have more. Me, I'm scanning the rest of the scene and looking for witnesses. But no luck. Damn Ripper might as well be a ghost. Do you have any leads that I can know? Ha, huh, plenty. If you ask McCluskey. But the truth is, we're as clueless as you probably are. Well, thanks for your time. Hey, hold on a minute. You haven't put in a donation for the Lonely Orphans Fund. The what? Yeah, you see, we make a contribution to the fund. I put you on a list. And you know next time we might find any orphans you're interested in. I see. Well, I'm always interested in finding out any new orphans you discover. Excellent. Hmm. Uh... Fine. His face splits into a wide grin. Excellent. I'll start an account for you. We'll get any new... new ye, bleh, bleh, words. We get any new useful leads on the Ripper, I'll give you a call. Now, I'll better get back to work before McCluskey shows up. See you around. Who's this guy? The elf standing before you may be possibly the ugliest elf you've ever seen. His meticulously clean lab coat, format jacket, format jacket, and old-fashioned bow tie give him the look of an undertaker from centuries past. He knows you approach and locks eyes with you, smiling a thin, unnerving smile. Hello there, stranger. Might I inquire, do you know which the Oregon Grinders faculty facility this body will be moved to? Uh... Why would you want to know something like that? The elf giggles, a strange, high-pitched warble. Warble you would not expect to emerge from, the, from his misshapen face. Oh, just a hobby. Never mind that, though. A good evening to you and your friend, the coroner. Okay, then. Wait, hold on. Is there anything to talk to Jettison about? Anything else? Did you know that particularly ugly elf standing over there in the crowd? Huh? Where? He's gone now, but he was asking about the body, wondering which organ grinder facility it would be taken to. Well, there's those who might be interested in purchasing some of her parts, sure, but that's pretty poor form to inquire at the site of a murder. An ugly elf, eh? I'll keep an eye out. Shouldn't be too hard to spot if he comes back around. Say, uh, Sergeant McGuire seems over there pretty friendly. Can I trust him? Yeah, that sounds about right. 
Any opportunity to get in McCluskey's way, he'll take it. A bit sleazy, sure, but I'll take McGuire over McCluskey any day of the week. Well, thanks again. Anytime. Alright, we were looking for a uh, coyote. I said we would buy, uh, said we would get to combat soon, and we haven't quite got to that point, have we? Let's see, is there any useful stuff around here? Oh, great, more talking. For right now, my plan is to get at least to the combat situation. That way I can kind of do that a little bit later, but uh, we'll get there eventually. The orc before you wears the standard stuffer shack employee getup. The uniform is well kept and well fitted, but the tears streaming down his large, crooked face do little to improve his appearance. He does not seem to notice your approach. I take it you knew the victim? Yeah, what's it to you? I'm sorry, were you too close? Thanks. Sorry, we're not used to folks being too friendly around here. The orc wipes away some tears with a dirty napkin. Yeah, we were pretty close, as co-workers go. Blind Lucy and I worked here at the shack for three years together. Started at the very same day. Blind Lucy? Well, Lucy wasn't completely blind, but she was legally blind. She had to wear these huge glasses and hold things up right to her face. But she got new eyes about a year ago. Hmm. Any idea how she scored them? No. She wouldn't talk about it, just called it her stroke of good luck. I guess that ruck ran out. I guess that luck went... I guess that luck ran out. Did you see anything strange in the store lately? I see weird stuff every day. It's a stuffer shack. But no, nothing stranger than usual. Do you know if she had any enemies? Well, I'm not sure. I know she had an ugly breakup with her boyfriend after getting those new eyes put in. That guy was probably upset for some reason and wouldn't leave Lucy B. Until she filed for a restraining order. That all seemed to die down a long time ago, though. Well, what was the last time you saw her? Here at the shack earlier today, I think she was heading to the market to meet a friend. Hell, I was going to join her on my way home, but we got some last minute customers. Well, thanks for your help and I'm sorry for your loss. Wait. You wouldn't happen to be a part of the investigation, would you? In my own way, why do you ask? Well, Lucy had, ugh. Lucy had this necklace, an intricate little carving of a dragonfly on it. Wore it every day, said her mom gave it to her when she left Denver. Anyway, you know how Lone Star is. All of her stuff will be bagged and placed in an evidence storage until the seventh world awakens. I just thought, well... I just thought if you could somehow get that necklace back before Lone Star cleans everything up. I could send it back to her family. I feel like I owe her that much. Hmm. I understand. If I can find it, I'll bring it to you. Thank you, friend. You know where to find me. So. Now we got a little bit of a clue why the eyes were taken out. Though not a motive as to why. Just a minor coincidence. Let's see. Hmm. Let's get to the attention of Officer Aguirre. Hello again. Can I help you? I need to take the victim's necklace with me. It may help in my investigation. Well, if it'll help you, that means it won't be helping McCluskey. Thanks. Yeah, sure thing. Good luck out there. So, if I was quick enough, I could do it on my own. But, uh, thankfully there is an option to kind of do it so you can get those karma points that are going to be more valuable later on when we need, you know, higher level skills. Alright, I got it here, Frank. You can send it to the family now. As he takes the necklace from you, you can sense a weight lifting from his shoulders. I'm glad I can do this much for Lucy, at least. Thank you, friend. I owe you. Just make sure that it gets to Lucy's family. I don't want it to turn up some Stone Star's office with my prints on it. See, I already have six karma. So, like I said, it's like candy. Alright, so... Now I can get two drones. Um, 
think that'll be enough for now. Biotech could be useful. Ah, eh, shoot, why not? All right. Okay, I think we've done almost everything besides this one NPC here. And then we're ready to move on. And save Coyote. Hey guy, you have any extra new yen? Just need some Sokra Zoom from the shack over there. Well, have ten, have ten. Nutra soy cakes will fill you up for, for far longer. Thanks, Chummer. Oh, I thought I'd get some Carbo. Never mind. Come on, guy. Let's go find Coyote. Yeah, I think we're ready. Let's see anything else? Nope, we got all the optional stuff done. You roll up on the most impressive bit of tenement squalor you've seen in a long time. There's a few street lamps there, and what light there is flickers in... I can't read. There's few strip. There's few street lamps here, and what light there is flickers with uncertainty. Most of the buildings are damaged. Most of the buildings are damaged and tagged. The smell of old rotting trash mixed with the you don't want to know is overwhelming. It's no wonder that people living here turn to BL BTLs. Anything's better than this. This better than life chip is the newest drug on the market. You don't need a good life. You can slot someone else's live through them, and wreck your brain in the process. The front doors of the apartments aren't even locked. As you step inside, you can hear a junkie crying for another hit. It's time to find Coyote, and find out what she knows about the night of Sam's murder. The Royal Apartments. What a hole. Can't imagine what it was like for Coyote growing up here. Paco trails off. A hell hole full of junkies. Looks like Stevie J gets their rent money and their drug money. If Coyote is here, we have to hurry. She's good, but well, these BTL guys paid to have be well. Just, ugh. These BTL guys paid to stay well informed. They may have known she was coming. Okay, I'm gonna take a quick break and come back, but we'll keep this episode going because uh, I do want to play some combat to kind of, you know, relax a bit. Okay, so much better. A little bit of tea, some air, and what a, what a difference it makes. Alright, hey there, junkie. The woman scratches herself like a cat at a couch leg. Please, can you spare some new yen? Hmm. My cred says a little too t light, too, lady. What can you do for me in exchange? I got nothing left to give. It all goes to BTLs. Everything. Please. Just a few new yen. Maybe I can credit you for information. Have you seen a woman come through here today, armed, looking for trouble? Yes. No. Hell, what do you want me to say? I'll tell you anything. Everything. Please. She drops her knees, bleeding. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. You should leave this place if you can. But that doesn't make sense. The BTLs are here. I just need something. She collapses, whimpering, and seems lost to this world. Now, as I mentioned before, how the flavor text, this also does a good job in lore building by uh, making the quests a lot more, well, they're obviously more structured, but they actually just do a better job at kind of like showing the world through as many little things as possible. Let's see, what do you got? A sad old man. Like a lazy pigeon, he watches you approach. You're not from around here, are you? I don't want any trouble. Easy, Gramps. I'm just looking for information. Then I'm gone. Bad day to come around here unexpected. Bit of a commotion upstairs. Stevie's men are twitchy. This young little thing came from earlier, snooping around like you two are. I could tell she weren't here for BTLs. Don't know how she got upstairs, but there was a lot more gunfire than there usually is this time of the day. Did you see her come back down? Nope. A couple of Stevie's men came around, asking what anyone saw, so I kept my mouth shut. Where's Stevie hold up? 
He's got the whole top floor to himself. Fancies he's the king around here. Sounds like Coyote's run went sideways. Hey, old man, you know how to get upstairs? You've been right, friendly, but I can't get on the wrong side of Stevie J. I'm sure you understand. You already stuck out your deck to help us. We'll find another way. Boy, it's a pretty good high uh, charisma checked early on. I thought it would be a lot uh, lower at this point in the game, but apparently not. Maybe my intelligence can do something here. Oh, just the dresser. <laughs> hey! This is one of those moments where my rigor thing comes into play. Your drone fits through the wall, snakes to the right and back around to open the apartment door from the inside. <laughs> See, it always is uh, nice to have little backup moments like that. Now, I think every class, for the most part, has moments like that. Although, I think the Magi groups have a little bit, uh... What's it called? A little bit less options, or at least they're more... They're not as obvious as these ones, but, you know... Maybe the Shaman, you can summon him around the corner, he can open the door for you. Makes, the, makes as much sense, right? <laughs> okay, so let's go, let's do this. Stevie J's penthouse apartment might have been nice at one point in time, classic even, but now it's filled with neon tube lighting, broken down furniture, piles of rubbish, and crates containing who knows what. Still, compared to the rest of you have seen, it's positively palatial. Palatial? Well hell, there's a word that I don't know. <laughs> the only thing marring the penthouse's pseudo luxury is a woman's cry of pain in the dis distance, followed by laughter. Someone being tortured for another's pleasure. You step deeper into the apartment. Oh, more karma. Good. Um, for right now, since we're not all that equipped with the uh, helpful people, let's get our drone combat things up. That way at least we have a decent chance. Oh, and then we go right into combat. <laughs> so, hey, Paco, what are you equipped with? A bat and an Uzi. Okay. Go get him, Street Samurai.
Well, this is a good place to be. A raspy, maniac voice booms over the penthouse's PA system. You really think you can come in here and shoot up my place? Do you know who I am? I know who you are. You're the guy I'm gonna kill. Okay, we need to think a little bit more smartly here. I can't use the frag grenade because I don't have enough action points. Alright. And I have pretty shitty odds. Okay. Then what we'll do... First kill him. If I can. Okay. Get him behind cover. Put him over here. And then reload. Perfect, just what I wanted. All right. Uh, yeah, go ahead and take him out. As you can see, the AI is not very bright, and I remember that much, at least. Alright, one down. Let's get him in closer so I can do better damage. Let's not, let's not get my rigor killed. That would be bad. Wow. Just like XCOM, huh? Well, at least they have bit as bad odds as me. <laughs> but no, I can't. And with a bloody gurgle, Stevie J is no more. Oh, that was him? Oh, never mind then. All good. Um, I think there's a bloodhound somewhere, but that's about it. Or Coyote probably did something. That oh, looks like progress. Oh, just what I was looking for. Oh wait, did my did my drone die? Okay. All right, that that warrants a load save because uh, those things are expensive to replace. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that they're early on, and because I took so much damage from that BS, yeah, we're gonna reload that. Oh well. 
I'll probably just yeah, I'll, I'll probably cut to the end of that for the next fight or something. Okay, so this time we're gonna shove the, the the meat in there. That way you don't have to worry about those two. Yeah, this was a better idea. Good hit. Alright, finally found you, Coyote. Coyote is badly injured, but she's managed and hold it to hold together. No time to talk. She peel, kneels and pick up the fallen guard shotgun. It's time we finish this. Alright, now we got our full team. Now, does she have any spells? No. But she has a handy shotgun, which we can definitely use in this fight now. I would rather I would rather that I take the fire damage than my rigor, sorry my drone, because I can actually heal myself, which I don't have any drone repair kits right now, so that would not be advised. So let's set up my guys over here. And let's put uh, her right on the near the door. Yeah, she just has a shotgun. Okay, we can deal with that. Yeah, 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 we know who you are. You're the guy I'm gonna kill. Oh yeah, definitely worth getting your first. <laughs> Just decimating everyone now. Or somehow they missed me doing that, but whatever. I'll accept it. And of course my line of sight is blocked. Go figure. All right, good. That was much better. About time you got here, Paco. Who's your friend? Just another professional. I need to ask you some questions. Not now. Caddy, we need to get you back to the Union. Miss Kabuta will meet you. has that med lab in the basement. No. 
I need to finish this other thing I came here for. I need to find something for Mr. Delia first. A stash of gems. Delia, I thought you said you'd never do another deal with that man. Look, Paco. I need an excuse to come back here and pay some debt, sell some debts. I figured I might as well get paid for it. Okay. How about this? Paco, you help her get it back to the Union. I'll find those gems for you, and then I'll meet you back there. She looks like she's about to argue, but says nothing. Come on, let's go. And now we're healed because the combat's still over, so it was alright. Could have sworn there was a more to the fight, but maybe that's the next part. Let's see. Any other stuff? Hey, we didn't have to kill the hell doggos this time. Let's see anything here. What time is it? Okay, we got plenty of time. Oh, good. Old junk. And more new yen. Okay, so that makes up for some stuff we lost. Uh, Alright, must be in this area then. Oh. Oh shit, took away my AP. Well, that's okay then. Because I got two for my robot. Oh. I thought I lost it. Never mind. Okay, so we can't avoid all the hell doggos. Okay, there's the gems. And I think that's it. Judging from how much uh, damage I'm taking, it might be a good idea to get this up at least one more. my crappy aim. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, let's, uh, for next time, let's get an increased body, because I'm really, uh, squishy right now. But that'll definitely help. And we're just gonna go all the way back to the Seamstresses Union, so, yeah. Make sure you don't, uh, waste your medkits like that. But anyways, we got text to read. Despite Coyote's clear desire to stand on her own two feet, Paco needs Paco's needs to help her. Uh, Paco needs to help her through the door to the seamstress's union. Heads raise, and the front room of the bar falls strangely silent. Paco stands by her side now, not speaking. His dark eyes flat with fury. Coyote presses a rag to her clawed-up face. She winces, but manages, manages to keep control as she breathes in slow, deep breaths to manage the pain. Taking a closer look. You see her arm isn't much more than shreds of meat and broken bone, held together by tendons and burned skin. It'll be a miracle if she has it by the end of the night. Yet she can hold a shotgun and not, you know, get lose it with a kickback. <laughs> Just saying. I didn't even realize if you look at her hand, her arm, it's actually all bloody and stuff. Pretty, pretty, that's a nice attention to detail for something that I could barely see. Miss Kubota is tending to the bar herself when Paco walks in, carries the mangled and bleeding coyote into the union. As soon as the boss lady lays eyes on her missing bartender, the place gets quiet fast. By the time she rounds the bar to meet you, coyote is the color of wet spackle, and there's something new in her eye. Fear. The woman has faced down hellhounds, but the sight of Miss Kubota has her staring at the floor and mumbling. Woman, how dare you miss two shifts and then come back and bleed on my floor? I'm sorry, miss. If I had... I had a run that went bad. Soka, I can see that. Your arm is a mess. Was this your crusade again? Do not answer. It will only upset me further. You caused me to worry about you, Cody, and that distracted me from my business. Hi, Miss Kubota. My apologies again. 
Sherry, take her downstairs to Mr. Dr. Castle. Yes, ma'am. And tell Castle to put something new and shiny where that arm used to be. I can't afford a cyber arm. I'm aware of your financial situation. When you are healed, we will discuss the concept of girl, the debt of honor. Now go, bleed elsewhere. Yes, ma'am. Her anger at Coyote's rashness slowly washes from her eyes and is replaced by tears. She sniffs, wipes them away, and inclines her t head toward you. Domi arigato, Sumaltzi. That, that girl is precious to me. It is not often that we see acts like these in the Barrens. You have performed a great service for my little family, and I welcome you into my home. Consider it yours while you work keeps you here. But we both know that words are a mere error. Beyond my thanks, I owe you this remuneration. Please take it as a show of respect. Thank you. You are most welcome, and I offer more than simple lodging. You will find that there is more to the Union than meets the eye. Below us is a small facility available exclusively for discriminating independent operatives like yourself. In it, you will find vendors selling the best gear the black market has to offer, a fully equipped cyberdoct, and a place to cure the rest when the dreck hits the fan, as they say. This place is a safe house too? My, you're quite the entrepreneur. Indeed. Normally I require a percentage of the runner's income for use of the facility, but as I said, you are a family now. Consider it on the house. To gain entrance, play G-A-C-F-F-C on the piano. Now, I'm not a music theory person, so I don't know if this is a reference to something, but uh, I might have to look that up later. Let's see, anyone else to talk to? I don't think so, but maybe she has more dialogue. Oh, is Mr. Delia here? Yes, he's in the back bar. That's usually where he does business. You mentioned Cry Coyote's Crusade. What is it? Coyote grew up in the Royale, but managed to escape that life. However, her cousin was apparently not so lucky. He came to town about a year ago and fell in love with the wrong circle. He was introduced to Sims chips and became addicted to BTLs. Coyotes have been tearing her way through chip houses for months now, searching for him and acting as a one-woman cleanup crew. If you don't mind, how did you get involved in all this? I'm a former runner. Now I provide a safe haven and a marketplace for runners who need a trustworthy place to congregate and do business. Are there any Johnsons or Fixes here tonight? In addition to Mr. Delia, you may wish to speak to a Van Grass. He's often side stage, stage side, but Van Grass is the most often a receiver of found articles but he occasionally has work. Then I'll be going now. So yeah, this is our uh, little home away from home. But uh, right now we need to find Mr. Delia. Oh, he must be in the way back. Okay, let's talk to Van Grass. Van Grass is busy talking on his comlink, checking his heads up to play display and mo motioning to a runner standing nearby, all at the same time. He's an intense little man. You get the sense that he likes to look busy. I'm Van Gras. Make it quick. Biz is good. Talk to me. I do street work. Got anything for me? He still hasn't looked at you. He's going a mile a minute. Nothing for you tonight. Sorry. I'm doing a thing right now. Important thing. Talk to you later. Oh, hey, guy. One more thing. He covers his comlink for a moment. Tilt his head your way, but you can see he's still staring at his HUD. I'm a fence, too. If you got anything you need to unload, come see me. Must maybe selling stuff. All right. Where is the Delia person I'm looking for? Johnny Clean. Oh, let's talk to him first. The hulking troll bouncer is in the immaculate suit, stands as impassively as ever. The absence of dust on his broad shoulders is the only real indication that the man ever moves. He nods to you when you approach. Evening. I see Coyote's back. Looking a little worse for wear. Do we have you to thank for that? The Paco and I tracked her down. Always wondered what she saw in him. But I guess he ain't all that bad. I'm just glad she's back. Couldn't stomach losing anyone else so soon after what happened to Sam. You're just a big old sheepdog, aren't you? 
Not the comparison made of most trolls, but I'm happy to defy expectations. Do you mind if I ask questions? Haven't minded so far. You know where I can find a fence? I think Van Grass is, this, is in the bar near the stage. The dwarf for the cyber I can't miss him. How long have you been working for Miss Kaboda? I crawled in here after I gobble. I mean, after I woke. Gobble. I don't know what that one needs. Miss Kaboda took me in and gave me a job. I've been here ever since. Do you have to pay extra manic for manicure on that hands of those big? It's not the size they charge more, it's the blood under the fingernails. Makes sense. Do you hear anything else about Sam's death? People are saying it was the Ripper, but people say a lot of things about what they don't know, or what they don't understand. Well, see ya. Catch you around. Okay, Johnny Clean. Got anything more, buddy? Brand new mop and surveying the crowd at the Union. Thanks for the tip the other day. Ms. Kubota said I should go to the safe house, but I don't quite know where that is. The piano is a little bit out of tune. Check it out. <laughs> Let's play chopsticks. You're a natural. You should give up shadow running and become a touring pianist. Johnny does not look impressed. Well, I had at least try. All right, play the notes. As you slowly peck the notes on the keyboard, they spark a faint memory of wonder, immediately forgotten as the entire piano slides to the left, revealing a hidden staircase. You descend the stairs into the Union safe house. The entrepreneurial Miss Dakota has combined everything a runner might need into one stopping shopping experience. Black market equipment, high-end magical talismans, and cybertech something that I couldn't read. <laughs> See any goodies here? So here is where you can kind of put your stash of things if you get like I am where I'm completely overburdened. Okay, put that in. Yeah, I forgot how annoying this UI can be at times. Actually, because I can't really use the AP costs, I'll take one of these. That way I can put the grenade there, and I don't have it taking up space here. Okay. Here's Dr. Sarah Castle. It's Algernon, Grubman, David Fry. Okay, we'll be with her in a shortly. What do you got, man? Past the bar, the edges of the safe house become somewhat indistinct due to the magical haze surrounding a particular elf. The man seems only half of this realm, his mind wandering the far horizons of astral planes while his body peddles his otherworldly wares. Good evening, young human, and welcome to this humble home that we call the Union. I am Algernon half -Dream. To ease your way through the sixth world, I offer you the best magical foci, spells, and fetishes for the conjuring of spirits. I don't think I can use anything here. But, uh, yeah, this is a much more better uh, representation of all the spells and stuff you can do, which is a hell of a lot. Okay, Eric, I think, is the weaponsmith. No, you're just the, the clothes guy. Anything new? Uh, not really. Okay, T.B. Grudman. I think he's a soldier guy. Yeah, this is the guy. Theodore Buster Grubberman, Grub Grubberman is a well-groomed orc dressed with a precision that suggests the straight lines of a high military officer's uniform. His hair is cropped short, high and tight as they say, and the neatness this presents is only compromised by the uneven tusk protruding from his mouth. The only other defect in this picture of perfection is the man's cybernetic arm which is obvious enough to be noticeable, but not so obvious to ruin the line of his suit. When he speaks, the orc's voice is soft and thoughtful, and he almost talks exclusively in numbers, calibers, ranges, rounds per second, arc of fire, razoring factor, tensile strength, and of course, price. Bunker Buster Grubman at your service. Friends call me the Buster. I also answer to Sergeant, Sir, and even Theodore on the rare occasion. Anything... Anytime you're in the market for firearms, ammunition, or ordnance, I'm your man. 
What exactly do you sell? Things go bang in all shapes and sizes, plus other odds and ends on occasion. Consider me your own personal armory. All weapons are guaranteed to meet your strict UCAS military specs or your money back. In addition, I can handle routine maintenance, repairs, and upgrades if you so desire. And if that wasn't enough, I also teach a safety and instructional course every weekend. This week, we're covering bayonets. Mark my words, they're making a comeback. So what can I get for you? Now, um... We're probably going to get more funds for stuff, so I might as well just increase my own self. I'm wondering if I really do need to get a second weapon at the point. I guess it couldn't hurt to get, say, like, a melee weapon. Or I can get, like, a shotgun, something kind of, you know, more close up. Or I can save it for the smoker or something else. You know, options. Although I would actually get one of these. I do need a repair kit for, you know, obvious reasons. Da -da 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 -da. Um, I guess I could have two SMGs for right now. Alright. Last person to check before we're calling it a day. Every inch of the tech above clove is covered in chaotic patchwork quilt of circuit boards, wires, chips, displays, and a million other things that you can't identify. In the eye of this technical bit storm stands a dwarf, immaculately dressed and supremely calm. I know that look. Don't let that size of the shot fool you. I can get any matrix hardware or software that exists. If it doesn't exist, then I can get it made for you. Any questions? I can answer or anything gear you need to provide. Um, we'll skip the question stuff right now. What do you have for sale? So here, if you were the Decker, this is where you would buy your programs that you would use for the, uh, I guess it's the matrix. So when we get there, we'll talk about that more. I'd rather save it for, you know, another day. Oh, I'm being rude. Let me introduce you to our resonant Decker, my good friend, Johnny Clean. While in the same overalls that you saw him in upstairs, down here, leaning over a work workbench crammed with circuit boards, cables and chips, Johnny Clean seems a totally different person. You get the impression that Johnny was once a hot as invisible as the most infamous Deckers today. Good to see you down here. Happy to be of help if I can be. Why are you dressed as a janitor? Did I stand out upstairs? No, janitors never do. When I was younger, I had a rep for getting in and getting out of systems so cleanly that no one ever knew I was there. Half the matrix runs that earned me my rep were made possible because I was able to get inside the facility posing as a janitor. Now it's just sort of part of me. Is it true that you were part of the Echo Mirage team? Let me take this one. Listen, I know the guy for over a decade and he's been smart enough not to tell me. So he is sure as hell not going to tell you anything about those days. For your health it is, best let the subject drop. Now, I don't know if that's another homage to the uh, SNES game, but I'm just going to assume it is because it kind of gives me that vibe. Okay. So we got one more thing to do, and then we can kind of call it a day by uh, seeing how a coyote is doing. Okay, just had a swig to kind of catch my breath a bit. So, Dr. Sarah Castle, how bad is the damage? Make it quick. I need to operate. Thanks for helping me out back there. Looks like you could have used a hand. Ouch. Bad joke right now. Oh shit. <laughs> Oops. Poor figure of speech. Okay, folks. I'm going to have to ask you to sit in the waiting room. Watch something trivid or something. This young lady and I have work to do. Take it easy. We'll be here when you wake up. If you say anything about me going to sleep, just give me something to bite on. You're a tough, kid, but you're not that tough. Okay, let's look, take a look at your face. Leave it. Excuse me? Coyote. I earned this face by being stupid. I'm going to keep it. End of story. Whatever you say, kid. With one swift move, she sinks a syringe into Coyote's thigh. Nighty night. Coyote looks both better and worse than the last you saw her. 
all the gaping holes are plugged, and she's sporting a shiny new cyber arm. But now that the adrenaline has worn off, it's clear she needs some rest. Good morning. Thanks to the miracle of modern science combined with Dr. Castle's magical healing powers, I'm almost good as new. Better, really. Nice arm. Thanks, Miss Kabuto will have me working for it the rest of my life. You look like you got something on your mind. I have some questions. What kind? About Sam Watts. What about him? I'm sorry to tell you, but he's dead. Holy dreck, Sam. I can't say I'm surprised. He was on a downward spiral for a long time. What can I tell you? You served Sam the night he died. What do you remember about that night? It was a pretty average night. Regular crowd, as I remember. Sam was drinking with a guy named Armage. Jake? Yeah, you know him? He, I met him. He's quite a bit of a charmer. <laughs> I like gingers. Anyway, Jake and Sam were having a, having a few, well... Jake was having a few, Sam was talking him back, take, tossing him back, but good. Eventually he got loud, the way he sometimes did when he was mixing drinking and who knows what, and Miss Kabuto wanted him ejected. Miss Cluey, Mr. Cluey wasn't around, can't remember why, so he asked Jake to do the honors. Jake dragged him out back into the alley, and that's the last I saw of him. You said he got loud, do you remember what he was saying? Standard Sam Drek, how he grew up rich and didn't deserve this. How he hated his mother, how he loved his mother. It was pretty pathetic. Well, can you tell me anything more? I heard you liked him. I did. He made me laugh. No one else seems to like Sam's jokes, but I did. Well, I guess I can kind of see that. Me too. Were you two friends? We ran it together. Got it. Guess it was the same way for me, in a way. We drank together. Sam just had a way of charming you. I guess I knew him the best way of everyone here. The best of everyone here. I'm sorry he's gone. Do you know if he had any enemies? Enemies, that's hard to say. Sam partied hard, and when he did, he ran his mouth off pretty good. Got his ass kicked on more than one occasion. But no, I don't think he had any enemies. At least none that I'm aware of. Well, did he have a place to live? On the streets, mostly. He occasionally convinced someone to let him flop on their couch, but he'd always overstay his welcome and get kicked out after a few days. Sometimes I'd sneak him down here so he could crash in one of the bunks. He used, he used one the night before I saw him last. So I have to ask, how bad was his drinking problem? If it wasn't just drinking, it would have been bad. But Sam was the monogamous type. Oh, wasn't the monogamous type. He dabbled in everything. Booze, chips, drugs. He loved the nitro. Whatever he could get his hands on. If it wasn't always that... It wasn't always like that, but once he got sick, he started using it more and more, and more stuff to try to forget about it. Was he? What was he sick? Dying, don't you know? Yeah, everyone could tell. You could look at him and see he was a walking corpse. It had to be the drinking. Then he disappeared for a while, and one day he came back all better. He even looked good. Did he say how? He said his mom helped him out. Never said how, though. Well, thanks for all your time. Now I need you two to do something for me. What do you need, babe? I need you to talk to Mr. Delia about the, uh, ro the Royale run. He's upstairs, usually. Tell him I didn't get the gems. Maybe I can make another run whenever I can. I will. Well, at least we got the gems, so we're all good there. But, uh, this seems like a pl good uh, place to stop. So, thanks for watching. Tune in next time when we uh, continue... Searching for Sam's murderer and whatever happens next. Because I can't remember it, but anyways, I'm bragging. Well, I'm rambling. But until then, catch you later.